And we didn't, I didn't have elders when I came up. It was a long time before I found people to kind of talk to about these things or to even have a conversation with. I, <laughs> this is a funny story. I, around 20, 26, realized that I was a bad gay person. I was just bad at it. I felt as though I did not have the skills to move forward. And uh, I read about the radical fairies and Harry Hay and kind of having a spiritual community and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, found out that there was a sanctuary in Vermont and there was one in Tennessee. And I figured I could get to Vermont quicker. So I went up on a bus all by myself. <laughs> I'd never been camping. I had to rent a, I had to rent a tent. And I went up and uh, to Vermont and I met all these fabulous people and I really loved it. I kind of fell in love with it. And it taught me a little, it taught me a lot about, I think, being a gay person. I think my drive to create community is that I came, when I came to New York, I didn't see one. And that's, I, I'm, I'm working on a piece called AIDS Orphan about coming into that time where there was this, you, the gap was so noticeable. I remember walking down the street uh, with a voice teacher of mine who was an older gay man and he just randomly looked at a building and said, everyone I know in that building is dead. And it was shocking. I was about 18 years old. I was shocking. So it really became apparent when I was here those first couple of years how many people you lost what kind of like there was a huge gap in in the cultural memory but also just like you didn't see a lot of people in their four days you just didn't and for me it was all kind of blind leading the blind you know i read a book by christopher isherwood and passed it to three of my gay friends and said read this just so you know what we're all talking about so for me, the, the quest for community or the, the kind of goal of community is about not allowing that to happen again.